All right, today, because I had to change the order of what was happening this week, but it would have happened this week anyway, we are going to be discussing matrices. That's the plural of matrix. And the goal of a three by four matrix is to find where three lines in three dimensional space, not just on a whiteboard, but on three dimensional space to find out where they're intersecting. So for instance, here's the solution over here. And what this is, is this is a point in three dimensional space where five halves is on the X, X axis. Yes, it is. Five halves is on the X axis. Negative two is on the Y axis. And you have a new axis here. One is on the Z axis. Now, what that looks like if we were to draw this, and I were to attempt to draw this in three dimensions, you've got the Y axis coming off in this direction. So we could call that the Y axis. And this the positive X axis. And the negative X axis. And the positive Z axis. And the negative Z axis. One way to look at this is uh, latitude, longitude and altitude. Another way is length, width and height, like for a box. So that's what we're doing today. And one of the things I plan to do today is upload these blank sheets to your, um, uh, let's see, to uh, module, the module for week two in Canvas. So you can have them to work your homework. But here we go. We have this line and this line and this line, and these are what lines look in three-dimensional space in real life, for instance. So I'm going to first rewrite them here. So line one, line two, and line three. So I'll rewrite these. Now, you have to be careful with the minus signs. Because the way my math lab writes minus signs, the minus is way over here, and then the Y is right there, or the X is right there, or the Z is right there. So there's a gap. So the best way to handle this is to fill in the gap with an invisible one. Okay, so now we'll have two X, minus one Y or negative one Y, three Z, 10, and eight X, one Y, negative one Z, 17. and 6x, 1y, and 3z, and 16. These are the variable terms right here, where this is the x column, because all of these are x terms. This is the y column, because all of these are Y terms. This is the Z column. All of these are Z terms. And this is the constant column because all of those numbers are constants. Constants are numbers that just exist themselves. They're not the coefficients of X, Y, or Z.
OK, now from this point, I am going to create matrix one and you'll see the difference between this system and matrix one. Here's matrix one. We're changing the names of line one, line two and line three to row one, row two and row three. And I'm going to use just the coefficients, the numbers in front of the letters and then the constants at the end. So two, eight, six, negative one, 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 three, negative one, three, 10, 17, and 16. And then I go back and check real fast, usually by going vertically. 2, 8, 6, negative 1, 1, 1, 3, negative 1, 3, and 10, 17, 16. And I even look over here. The number one error that you make doggone that I make is copying down the wrong number. It's very dangerous. Okay, you're going to notice when you study this, that this, I'm not going to outline this every time, but I'm just gonna do it right now. This part of the matrix, is called the coefficient long word the coefficient matrix try to fit that in this part of the matrix is called the coefficient matrix this doesn't really have a name, the, the constant column maybe, but the whole matrix together is called an augmented matrix. Augmented means added on, and this column is added on to the coefficient matrix, and the two together give you an augmented matrix. So I'm going to write the entire matrix, and I should do this in black. The entire matrix is called A co um, um, an augmented matrix. For the people who are going on to take finite math, it's especially important that you understand what we're doing today and you know what things are called. Okay. You're gonna do a lot of these in uh, finite math. Finite math is required for business majors. Comes after this class. All right, now, we did row operations yesterday. We reviewed solving two by three systems. We're going to use row operations to solve this matrix, which means we're going to find what X equals, what Y equals, and what C equals. The row operation we're going to use, that is the group of row operations, the method we're going to use here 
is related to yesterday's method. It's called Gaussian. Elimination. Now, yesterday's method was called elimination. You, it didn't matter whether you eliminated your X's first or you eliminated your Y's first. Just eliminate one of them. But here, every step matters. So I'm going to be using the recipe every time and I'm going to be doing my calculations here. So here we go. Our goal, the first goal, make this a little bigger and come over here. Our first goal, because this is the method that Gauss, a very famous mathematician, invented. Everything has to be very ordered because we're doing a lot of things. So you have to go in the right order. My first goal is to use row operations, and you'll see more of what they are as we do them, to change this eight in row two to a zero, which is why I made a kind of a zero around it. Now let me write the rest of the eight again. Okay. Now watch what I do. In order to put a zero in that position, I'm going to have to work with row one and row two. I have to be able to add row one to row two and get a zero in the X position. Well, that's not gonna happen right now. Look at that, two plus eight is 10, it's not zero. So, what I'm going to do is, and I could do this in a couple of different ways. I'm going to multiply row one by four. Four times two is eight. And then I'm going to multiply row two by negative one, which will give me a negative eight. So as you're about to see, this will add up to zero because I'll have eight plus negative eight, which is zero. Now, these doing this is going to give me a new line, a new version of row two. So I call it new row two. And there's a truck starting up across, across from my house. Let me move on out of here and close the door. And that'll help a little bit. OK, here we go. Four times row one. Four times two is eight. Four times negative one is negative four. Four times three is twelve. 4 times 10 is 40. Negative 1 times row 2 
will give me negative one times positive eight is negative eight. Negative one times positive one is negative one. Negative one times negative one is positive one. And negative one times 17 is negative 17. Now I'm going to add vertically. 8 plus negative 8 is 0. Now this is the new row. Ugh, stop that. The new row 2. You'll see what happens. 8 plus negative 8 is 0. Negative 4 plus negative 1 is negative 5. 12 plus 1 is 13. And 40 plus negative 17 is the same thing as 40 minus 17. This will be 10 and this will be 3. So 10 minus 7 is 3 and three minus one is two, and I'll double check that. Yes, that's true. This now is going to be my new row two. Why is it called new row two? Here's what we're going to do with it. This, go away, go away, go away. This, is going to be my new row two. This is matrix two. This is going in here for row two. So I'll have a zero. I'll have a negative five. I'll have a 13. And I'll have a 23. And then double check that. Okay. Now, row one stays the same. Two, negative one, three, ten, six, one, three, and sixteen. This now is row two. Now this is gonna seem really strange to most of you. Um, all I can say is I promise you'll get used to it. After you've done it a few times, you can move through this whole process very quickly. You'll feel like you were born knowing it. Here's our next goal. Notice we now have our zero in that position. Our next goal is to put a zero in this position. To do this, I'm going to be working with row one and row three. And that will give me, or yield, a new row three. Now you could try using row two. What you're going to see is that this zero will prevent you from zeroing out this position. So you have no choice. You have to work with row one and row three so that I can multiply row one by something. I can multiply row three by something. I can add this position to this position and get a zero. And since two goes evenly into six, three times, if I were to multiply row one by negative three, that would give me a negative six here. Or 
if I were to multiply row one <clears throat> by three, that would give me a six. And if I were to multiply row three by negative one, I would have a negative six. <clears throat> I have a choice. Either way. So just to show you I can do it, I am going to multiply row one by negative three. And row three is going to stay the same. Here we go. Negative three times row one. Negative three times two is negative six. Negative three times negative one is positive three. Negative three times positive three is negative nine. And negative three times 10 is negative 30. Now, one of the great things about working with a matrix is that it's all arithmetic. You've probably already noticed that. There's no complicated X's and Y's and Z's and all that. All you're doing is working with the numbers. It's great. OK, row three. Is not going to change. Six. One. Three. Sixteen. So my new. Row three. Will be. Negative six plus six is zero. Three plus one is four. Negative nine plus three is negative six. Negative 30 plus 16. Okay. That'll be negative 14. Let's double check. 10, one plus one is two plus one is three. Yes, that's correct. So I have zero, four, negative six, negative 14. This is the new row three. I'm going to go to matrix three. And before I do anything else, I am going to write down zero, four, negative six, and negative 14. And I'm going to make sure I wrote it correctly. Yes. OK, now. Row two is going to be this row two and row one. Notice row one never changes when you use Gaussian elimination. There's another form of elimination where it will change eventually. But we're not using it. This is for beginners. Gaussian elimination. So zero, negative five, whoops, um, 13, 23. And two, negative one, three, and ten. Now look, we have a zero in this position and a zero in this position. We have one more position to put a zero in, and then we can start solving for X, Y, and Z. This 
is where the next zero is going to go. And the only way I can get that is by working with R2 and R3 in order to keep my zeros in the first position because the goal of Gaussian elimination is to get a triangle of zeros here. Okay, here we go. R2, I'm going to multiply R2 by something and, and add it to R3 times something, and that again will get me a new row three. Because we have to get two zeros in row three, there are two new row threes. All right, now I have to add negative five to four and get a zero. It's not gonna happen unless I multiply row two by something and row three by something. I know that five and four both go evenly into 20. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to multiply row two. Now notice they're already the opposite signs. So I don't have to put an opposite sign in. Um, four times negative five will give me negative 20. Five times positive four will give me positive 20. So I'll have negative 20 plus positive 20 equals zero, which is what I need. So four times row two plus five times row three will give me a new row three. Four times row two. Four times zero is zero. Four times negative five is negative 20. Four times 13 is uh, 52. And four times 23 four times three is 12 carry the one four times two is eight plus one is nine that should be 92 double check me I dislike big numbers all right five times row three Five times zero is zero. That's why we needed to use row two and row three. Five times four is positive 20. Five times negative six is negative 30. And five times negative 14 is Five times negative 14 is going to be negative 70. Making sure, yes. Now I add vertically, zero plus zero is zero. Negative 20 plus positive 20 is zero. Uh, 52 plus negative 30 is really 52 minus 30. 2 minus 0 is 2, 5 minus 3 is 2, and 92 minus 70 is 22. Is that true? Okay. New row 3.
OK, never mind. I had a moment of panic. You should never look at the answers first. That can lead you wrong. All is well. All right, here we go. Our new row three is going to go here. Zero, zero, 22, 22. Go away. I'm having trouble here. Here we go. All right. Zero, zero, 0022222. And then row two will not change. Zero, negative five. 13, 23. And one will not change, two, negative one, three, and positive 10. This is matrix four. When you use Gaussian elimination, most of the time, well, on a three by four system, which is what this is called, uh, usually you'll, you won't have more than four matrices. This is our fourth matrix. And I know I'm done with row operations because I have my lower triangle of zeros. Now that I have this matrix, I can begin something called back solving. And as you can see, back solving is pretty easy. I'm going to get rid of recipe. I'm going to get rid of my little dots down here. Not there, I guess. OK. The first thing I'm going to do. Ah, I forgot a very important step. The first thing I need to do is rewrite these as equations. So 2x minus 1y plus 3z equals 10. Now, since there's a zero here, I don't have to put in the zero. What I'm going to do, looking up there, so I don't miss anything, hopefully, will be negative 5y plus 13 z equals 20 and I've got a zero zero here so I'm going to have 22 Z equals 22 and the reason we're going to back solve is that row three is the very easiest to solve it's like it's always going to be like a one step process. Twenty two Z equals twenty two. So to solve for Z, I find out that Z equals one. Now I go backward to row two. Which is why it's called back solving. 
negative 5y plus 13z, and z is 1, equals 23. So negative 5y plus 13 equals 23. Now I subtract 13 from both sides. Thirteen minus thirteen is zero. Negative five y equals three minus three is zero, and two minus one is one. I divide by negative five, and I divide by negative five, so that y equals negative 2. Now I have one line left to go in my back solving. Row 1. Actually, it's line 1 now, but we don't have to get too picky with that. 2x minus 1y plus 3z, and z is 1, equals 10. So 2x plus 2 plus 3z, uh, 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 1, 1. One, three times one is three, equals 10. So two X plus five equals 10. I subtract five from both sides. Five minus five is zero. So I'll be left with two X equals 10 minus 5 is 5. Let me make that more clear, minus. 10 minus 5 is 5, I divide by 2, I divide by 2. So, x equals 5 over 2. So now I have all my answers. So how do you give your answers? How do you put them in the answer box in my math lab? This is what the filled in answer box looks like. This is what a point in three dimensional space looks like. It has three numbers, not two, like a point you would put on the whiteboard. So what you do is you've got an answer box in my math lab, and you're going to see an answer box for the X coordinate. Well, yeah, the X coordinate of the point. Oh yes, and you have to put parentheses unless they've put it for you already. So a box, comma, box, comma, box, and then parentheses. Unless, again, they've already put the parentheses there for you. And this is solving a matrix. Finding out where three points in three-dimensional space cross, cross each other, intersect in three-dimensional space.
All right, I know this is a little shocking. So, rather than ask for questions, because many of you won't know what to ask, let's do another one so that you can see. Um, actually, there's another row operation that will help you. We're going to do that first. How so? Yeah, I'm not going to save this yet. All right, let me go there. And there. And here. And call this up. Oh, right, go over here. And now here is the other one. These incidentally are taken from uh, two of the matrices you're going to be solving. So bigger, oh, let's see, width. There we go. Here is our system. OK, let me show you something you can do in the very beginning to make life a little bit easier for you, because this is the equation of a line in three dimensional space. This is the equation of a line in three dimensional space, and this is the equation of a line in three dimensional space. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't like all those negative signs. Not really. I mean, I can live with them, but I don't like them. So I can, if I want, multiply all of the numbers in equation one by negative one, and all of the numbers in equation two by negative one. And what that will do for me is that will turn all the negatives into positives and all the positives into negatives. Meanwhile, I'm not going to do it to line three because line three is perfectly pleasing to me. You don't have to do this, but you can do it. So I'm going to do it. Negative one times negative four X is positive four X. Negative one times minus three Y or negative three Y is positive three Y. And negative one times negative Z, or yeah, let's put a one there. Negative one Z is positive one Z. And negative one times positive 10 is negative 10. Wasn't that, isn't that more beautiful? I think it is. Negative one times negative eight X is positive eight X. Negative one times negative two Y is positive two Y. Negative one times negative two Z is positive two Z and negative one times 16 is negative 16. And I'm going to write line three just the way it is because it doesn't bother me a lot. 6x plus 3y plus 1z equals negative 14. And so I have not really altered our matrix, but just made it look a little different. So it'll be easier to solve. Because negative numbers can mess you up. All right, now onward to matrix one. Four, eight, six. Three, two, three. One, two, one. And negative 10, negative 16, negative 14. And 
and we will begin using the same exact method we used before. Our first goal is to put a zero in that position. So I'm going to use row one and row two and the result will yield a new row two. So I can turn this four into a negative eight, so I have negative eight plus eight is zero, if I multiply all the numbers in row one by negative two. So I'm gonna do that. Negative two times R one, Negative two times four is negative eight. Negative two times three is negative six. Negative two times one is negative two. And negative two times negative 10 is positive 20. I'm leaving row two just the way it is. Eight two, two, negative 60. And then I'll add vertically to get my new row two. Negative eight plus eight is zero. Negative six plus two is negative four. Negative two plus two is zero. And 20 minus 16 is four. So I'm gonna do something else you can do if you want to. New row two is zero, negative four, zero, four. Notice that both of these the only two non-zero numbers are both divisible by four. So what I can do is I can take the new row two, if I want to, and you don't have to, and a divide, divide every number by four. So what this is going to give me is zero divided by four is zero. Negative four divided by four is negative one. Zero divided by four is zero. And four divided by four is one. And that can be my new <clears throat> row two. Again, you don't have to do it, but you can do it when it comes up. So here's new row two, I'm putting it here. I try to do this first, so I don't forget. Incidentally, I could have divided by negative four and gotten a positive one there and a negative one there. It kind of all depends on your personality. Row one, is four, three, one, negative 10. And row three is six, three, one, negative 14. And this is matrix two. Now our goal I love the noise. Now our goal 
is to change this position to a zero. And to do that, I have to work with row one and row three. That will give me or yield row new. New row three. OK, now four and six both go into 12. So if I multiply row one by three, I'll get a positive 12. And if I multiply row three by negative two, I'll get a negative 12. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to move the plus sign over. and write negative two. And then over here, I'll write three times row one. Three times four is 12. Three times three is nine. Three times one is three. Three times negative 10 is negative 30. And negative two times row three will give me negative two times six is negative 12. Negative two times three is negative six. Negative two times one is negative two. And negative two times negative 14 is positive 28. And then I add vertically to get a new row three. Twelve minus twelve or twelve plus negative twelve is zero. Nine plus negative six, same thing as nine minus six, three. Three minus two is one. And negative 30 plus 28 is negative 2. So we move to matrix 3. It's the same exact process over and over again. My new row 3 is going to be 0, 3, 1, negative two. My row two is zero, negative one, zero, one. And row one is four, three, one, and negative 10. Okay. Notice how you can go faster. The more you know what you're doing, the more you know what you're doing, the more you know the method of Gaussian elimination, the quicker you can go. All right, our goal is to put a zero in that position. Now I have to work with row two and row three in order to keep my zero in that position. So, row two plus row three will give us again a new row three. Okay, now. I have to, if I multiply row two by three, I'll have negative three. And then if I leave row three alone, I'll have positive three. So negative three plus positive three is zero. That's what I need. So let's see, I'll multiply all the numbers in row two by three, and I'll leave row three alone. 
3 times rho 2. 3 times 0 is 0. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. 3 times 0 is 0. 3 times 1 is 3. And row 3 is 0, 3, 1, negative 2. OK. I add vertically to get my new row 3. 0 plus 0 is 0. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. 3 minus 2 or 3 plus negative 2 is 1. Woo! All right, and here, oops, look at this. I got so excited. Matrix 1, matrix 2, matrix 3, ugly, matrix 4. So the new row 3 is going to be 0, 0, 1, 1. Row 2 is 0, negative 1, 0, 1. Row 1 is 4, 3, 1, negative 10. And now, I rewrite matrix 4 as a set of equations with x, y, and z. 4x plus, I know to put a plus because that's positive, 3y plus 1z equals negative 10. There's a zero here, so negative 1y equals 1. And there's a zero there, so I don't even fill it in. There's a zero here and a zero here, so 1z equals 1. Now this looks like it might be really easy to solve. I mean, look at this, 1z is 1. That tells you immediately that C, I made that way too small. C equals one. Z isn't even up here, so I don't have to put a, a one in for Z. I've got negative one Y equals one. So Y, equals negative one. And I'm going to come over here and put in Y and Z and solve for X. 4X plus 3 times negative 1 plus 1. 1Z one is 1 times 1. Well, I'll write it. Equals negative 10. So 4x minus 3 plus 1 equals negative 10. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. So I'll have 4x minus 2 equals negative 10. Now I will add 2 to both sides in order to isolate the x term. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. I'm left with 4x on the left. And negative 10 plus 2 is negative 8, so negative 8 on the right. I divide both sides by positive 4. 
and that will give me x equals negative 2. So, my point in three-dimensional space is negative 2, negative 1, 1. Let's see if that's right. I hope it is. Yes, thank goodness. Yes, it is. We have just solved two matrices. And on Thursday, we're going to solve the word problems that go with these matrices. So now, I imagine you have questions. You might not, or you might. Um, the main question that a lot of people ask, actually I did too, is why do we have to do it that way? What if there's an easier way? And the answer is you must know Gaussian elimination. Especially for the people who are business majors. So, just grin and bear it. Bite on a piece of wood and do it. OK. Now, now that we've answered that question, another question people ask is, is there a choice of numbers? And yes, I tried to address that. There is no one right way when it comes to multiplying one row by one number and one row by another number. What is absolutely essential is that you get your lower, your lower triangle of zeros. Those of you who take finite, you'll learn about Gauss-Jordan elimination. And what you'll have to do is you'll have to carry on this method so that you get a zero here, a zero here, and a zero here. It's, it's more elaborate. But I actually like it better because you don't have to back solve. Now you ask your questions. OK. Yes. If there are no questions, you can go ahead and go and start practicing this stuff. I'll be putting uh, these sheets and some blank sheets um, up in a week two module in Canvas so that you'll have them to work with. 